Um, do you want to go right into picks, or do you want to talk about this Urban Meyer news? Or do you want to save that for next week? Would you touch on the Urban Meyer news? All right. I only have a couple thoughts on it. So, Urban Meyer, it's not, I haven't seen anything officially official. official yet. It's not official, but it's there. Yeah. Um, but Urban Meyer reportedly going to be the next head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Everyone has pretty much said it's going to happen from NFL Network to ESPN. Uh, I'll be honest. I think this is pretty interesting. I, I, it's bold. Like it's bold. <laughs> Very bold. And that, that's what the Jaguars need. I've yeah. been wanting to see Urban in the pros for a pretty long time now. I think the way he's more – because, listen, when you're a college coach, you're, like, developing young men. You're yeah. almost like a father to them. You kind of have to help them along the journey of them growing up in school. Like, dude, he was always just – I don't give a shit about any of that. We're playing football here. We're winning national championships. So I think being in an environment – you know, like the NFL where it's like, dude, we don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, go yeah. win some football games. Like, he's going to thrive in that environment. I think the fact that he's going to have low expectations, he's going to have probably three or four years minimum before they even think about firing him. Yeah. He loses every game because they're rebuilding. He's going to get to take his pick of Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields. Which is so, I want to touch up on that because everyone has made it seem like, not that it's a done deal, but that Justin Fields is very much in play cause, just because Urban Meyer is now the head coach. First of all, Urban Meyer didn't recruit him to Ohio State. No. I don't know why everyone seems to think that. Like, no. And he's going to surround himself, I think, at least with good NFL coaches that are going to be whispering in his ear, take Trevor Lawrence, take Trevor oh, Lawrence. 100%. Dude, if there's one thing Urban Meyer isn't, you know, he's a lot of things. He's not an idiot. Like, he's right. going to take Trevor Lawrence. So, I mean, they're going to have – I mean, they got a, they have a good, couple good wide receivers. Yep. Uh, they have a good D end. I mean, they, good they running back pieces. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robinson. They have a couple good pieces. They get, dude. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them win like six games next year. Yeah, it it, it depends solely on Trevor Lawrence's development. Yeah. Uh, but if he can come in and be like an Andrew Luck or even yeah. Joe Burrow, I mean, Joe Burrow. I, say, I don't think he needs to even hit that Andrew Luck thing. I, mean, yeah. I think if he can come in. And see, the thing about Trevor Lawrence is he has a very high floor. So I think, you know, he has a very high ceiling as well. But I mean, like, he's, he's, I think he's going to do very good right away with, with lackluster talent just based on what he's been doing. So, um, I, I like it. I like the high. Yeah, I, like I, I think, like I said, it's bold, but it's also very interesting to the point where I kind of like it a lot. No, so I, like I want to compare it to something, and I, I think it's a very good comparison, actually, not just to toot my own horn. But I remember when the Boston Celtics traded away, like, Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett and all those guys that they had. They were like, you know, we're going to build through the draft. We're going to get younger. And they ended up uh, not firing Doc Rivers. They traded him to the Clippers. And then... They hired, and then, you know, that was kind of like a big question mark in the offseason was, who are the Celtics going to hire? And they ended up hiring Brad Stevens. And at first, you know, I, and I am a, a bit of a Celtics fan, though I'll, I'll admit I don't follow them closely at all. I was like, what the hell are we doing? You know, hiring this dude who has no experience in, in the NBA, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know his background particularly well. Nah, he, he was the Butler guy. He yeah, he was the guy at Butler who took him to two national championships. And I was like, you know, I think he's a really good college coach. What are we doing in the NBA? You know, get, yeah. getting him in the NBA. But then I thought about it, or someone talked me into it. Boston was going through rebuilding. They were going to draft a lot of college players who needed development. Uh, and what better way to do that than with college or with a college coach? When you look at the Jags, they have two first-round picks, two second-round picks. I don't know about third-round picks. I assume they have at least one. So that's five picks in the first three rounds. They're getting younger. They're going to get a new quarterback. And, I, again, I'm like, what better – this is what I think, too. What better way to break in these new quarterbacks than with – or uh, new uh, young players than with one of the best college coaches to ever play the game? Or, I'm sorry, I, to ever I coach the just, game. Sorry. I was just going to say – the Jaguars are just one of those teams that kids coming out of college don't want to go to just because it's Jags or it's the Cardinals or it's the Lions. It's just one of those franchises. But I think Urban Meyer changes that a little bit. I think Urban Meyer, even for veterans in the NFL, yeah. makes that, makes that a, a much more desirable place than before. I don't know if it's still a desirable place in general yet, but it's... Like, do you I mean, really want to... Honestly, with Jacksonville, I don't think that's really even one of the top three jobs open right now. Even though they have two first or two first round picks, they could get Trevor Lawrence, I guess. But maybe you put it at three. I don't think it's a top two job. 
But, you know, if you can't get one of those top guys on the market, why bother taking a chance? Go, I don't know, be bold and take a guy who has been very successful in his career. It, it, was, a, it was a good hire. I, I, I think it will end up being successful. I don't think it will be Super Bowl successful, but yeah. I do think the Jaguars will be competitive. Did, did, like I said when Arizona hired Kingsbury, they only hired him to develop a young quarterback, and that's what he's done. He's not a yep. good X's and O's guy. I've said that from the beginning. But he has developed Kyler Murray into being a very capable player. Um, this yeah, I could totally uh, see this good. being sh- just surely a uh, what do you call it? A gosh almighty! I just had the word. No, I lost it. A culture change hire. Like we are going yes. to come in and yes. we are going to start winning now. Kind of culture change. Uh, and that's what I see this being. Very interesting. Uh, the one thing where I think this could be an issue is he's used to being the top guy in college, and you're not going to be that in the NFL. That's what, why a lot of college coaches have struggled. Um, but and you know you think about you know dealing with players that are uh, make you know making money and dealing with egos and stuff. I don't think that bothers Urban. Like no, I don't either. Like I do believe he he knows he's going to come in. And he, I think he's one. He's going to get a staff, a really good staff, because I think people will jump at the bit to uh, coach with him. Uh, and I, I just don't see it being a huge issue, apart from the fact that he's not the top dog. And I hope he realizes that. And I think somewhat he will. But I mean, it's it's fun if he thinks he's the top dog. I think every right. NFL coach does. I mean, that's just that you're not going to get to that point unless you have that mentality. So I have no problem with him having. I think all NFL coaches right. have absolutely massive egos, so I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. Um, if he brings dubs, dude, it doesn't matter what you do; it really doesn't in the NFL. That's and why I, I think. another thing I want to touch up on here is I've always been a believer that football is football. Like I don't really care what your background is a ton. Like if you've been successful, I think you can be successful at the next level. It just depends on the right fit. You know what yeah. I mean? And I, I, mean, I can see that happening to, here. They'll point to people like Nick Saban. I mean, dude, Nick Saban's medical staff told him not to take drinks. Yeah, I was just about to say, dude, Nick dude, Saban in the NFL is a lot better than people think. Dude, Those two years for the Dolphins. The biggest, that is one of the most insane, like, that could change the history yes. of football things yes. ever, dude. Yes. Imagine if they get Drew Brees and Drew Brees wins two Super Bowls down in Miami. He, he has they, said if he had Drew Brees, he would still be in the, in the NFL. 100%. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, dude, if... Nah, I, I would. Never mind. I was going to say, dude, I bet that Saban's maybe even thinking about going to the NFL now, but he's... No, he's no, no, no. That, I think that went out the door. I used to think that, like, five years ago. I think that's out the door now. Uh, but same deal. Like, people don't realize. He was, I think, 10 and 6 his first year at Miami, or 9 and 7. There's no doubt in my mind. Then he went, like, 7 and 9. Like, And everyone said he was awful. He really wasn't that bad in the NFL. Dude, Nick Saban could coach field hockey. And yes. Like, yes. That's just, like, <laughs> and, and like I said, if Miami's medical staff had cleared Drew Brees and he had gone to Miami, Football would be different. we would have a total, like, it would be completely changed. Alabama would not be, and I'll say this, if Rich Rodriguez goes to Alabama, that changes everything in college, too. But also, the move with Drew Brees changes everything about college and the NFL. So those are two big milestones for Alabama that happen to go their way. Uh, anyway, let's move on to some picks. Uh, I think we both agree that Urban Meyer, we both kind of like it. It's bold. It's something Jackson yeah. needed. Uh, but I don't think either of us would be surprised if it didn't work out. No, I mean, dude, listen. At the end of the day, it's the Jags, and it's going to be hard to overcome that it's the Jags obstacle. But listen... Tom Coughlin had him a, a championship Super Bowl yeah. caliber roster. They had good rosters in the mid two thousands. I remember. Yeah. Uh, like they they've gotten to. Peace Jacksonville has like, always done a. I thought Jacksonville has always done a good job of like kind of drafting and developing. Like they they've always had some players. good players there. They just lose their players. Yeah, and, and they lose their players. They usually have done a shit job of keeping hiring coaches and keeping coaches. Coughlin was an exception. They lost him. I don't remember if they fired him or not, but they lost him to the Giants at least. Uh, Remind me of like like Pacers or something in the NBA where it's like they always have a pretty good team because they do draft really well and have a really good front office or like the Jazz, but like they're never going to win a championship. No one's staying there for the long run. Like nobody's no top five player is going to sign for the to the Jazz or the, you yeah. know, the the Pacers or something. So that's the way I look at them. So, but I I, I expect. 
I expect them to be competing for a playoff spot in 2019. Yeah, I think at least in two years. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, now we're going to get into some picks. Let's start at things off. You know what? No, we're going to save that one for last because it's my team. We're going to save the Packers game for last. Let's start with the Sunday night game. Ravens at Bills. As of right now, Bills are a two-and-a-half point favorite. This is hands down the, the toughest call. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm fifty fifty on it as I speak right now. Dude, my heart says Bills. Yeah. But my head says Ravens. Dude. Yeah. It does. I think I have to go Ravens. This is tough. It's so tough, dude. I just because honestly, I was not that impressed with the Bills last week. No. I Josh wasn't. Allen looked really good, but that defense struggled. Josh Allen won that game. Right. Yeah. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm telling you, man, all it takes is, like, an early Josh pick, and the Ravens go up 10 points, it's over. Yep. It's over. They'll just run the clock out. They'll, I they'll agree. Catch and Between. the Bills have struggled to stop the run this year. Um, yep. I'm Dude. with you. No, you know what? No, 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 I'm, I'm, We're not even counting these picks. We don't count these picks until the Super Bowl. Yeah. So, I'm going to ride with our boy Josh Allen. I'm, I'm going to do it, I just to be it. different. I want to pick Josh Allen. And the Bills so bad, but I don't know what it is. Something's telling me Lamar Jackson's going to lose that game. Tough road game. Back-to-back -back road games. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what Lamar Jackson's made of. Uh, I'll put it that yep. way. Um, all right. Sunday afternoon game. Browns, Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs right now are a 10-point favorite, so Vegas doesn't really think it's going to be that close. Um, I really want to go Browns. I want to see the Browns win. I just don't think they have the horses. It's another heart head thing. Like my heart says Browns. And yeah. The Chiefs are the Chiefs are just gonna win, man. I just it, what it's gonna come down to, in my opinion, is the Browns aren't gonna be able to play their brand of football because yeah. they're gonna. gonna yeah, like if they off. can't get the run game going, it's over. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna go Chiefs. I, I do think that's gonna be about a ten point game. I'll, I'll say twenty thirty. I think it might be worse than that because. I'm not sure. I said it the other day, but the more I think about it, I don't think Cleveland's defense matches up well with Kansas City no, at all. Uh, if Miles Garrett can have a huge game, maybe they have a shot. But without Olivier Vernon, it's going to be tough. I, I, I just think they're going to double or triple Miles Garrett and dare the rest of Cleveland's D-line to do something. And I just don't think they can. I don't trust their secondary to be able to stop. Kansas City's passing game. And I think the Chiefs win. I'm not sure it's going to be that close. Let me give you something else, too. Obviously, every coach is decent off of why Andy Reid is the yeah. best off of why coach of all time. I, I saw like, something where his – I forget what the total number – like the numbers, the exact numbers were, but every, the dating back to his game, I think it was with the Eagles and the Chiefs, when he has a bye week in the playoffs, his offenses average 38.5 points per game. Like – Dude, the Browns aren't winning that. Like, if the, if the Chiefs do come out and score thirty eight, the game's over. Like, the Browns aren't going to score that much. Dude, it was like a. It was in the early two thousands. It started to become like a thing among Eagles fans. It was like, dude, it does not matter who they're playing. It doesn't matter how bad they are if it's after a five point win. Yeah, and that's it, dude. Andy Reid. Th this was a, this was a favorable matchup for them. I took the Ravens in, uh, in our before the preseason or I'm sorry, postseason started because I thought the Ravens were a tough matchup when the Chiefs had two basically two weeks off. Yep. I thought they were a very tough matchup. Browns, it's totally different. I, I just don't think the Browns match up. The Ravens do. I don't think the Browns do at all. Yeah. So I, I like the Chiefs by a lot. Uh, the other game, Sunday afternoon, uh, technically Sunday evening game, Bucks at Saints. Uh, first, Saints are actually a three-point favorite, so that's interesting. Two, it's the it's the matchup, the only matchup between the two oldest quarterbacks of all time. Or I shouldn't say that. It's the only matchup between two quarterbacks I think that are forty over forty yeah. of all time. Listen, man, I just, I cannot, and, and this is a really bad reason to pick a game. I kind of hate when people do, like, use these little dumb reasons, but I just don't see Tom Brady losing the same team three times. I, I know that's not a good reason. No, I get reason, that. But that's my reason. It yeah. Is, I don't see Tom Brady going up against the same defense three. He's not going to make the same mistakes he made the last two times against that defense, in my opinion. The only reason I'm cautious against that. Because I'm the same with you. I, I, I'm i going to take Tampa here. I'm not that confident in it, though. No, no, me, no, no, me neither. Yeah. Dude, the Saints have blocked them. I mean, yeah. a normal person would Yeah, like, and that, that's what I was just about to say. It would be different. Because I remember one year, way, way, way back in the day, 
uh, Green Bay, this was the game where Green Bay played Minnesota in the playoffs, and Randy Moss mooned the crowd after scoring a late touchdown. So that season, Green Bay had beaten Minnesota twice, and I believe both times were last-second field goals. And I was really too young to understand it, how hard it is to beat a team twice in a season, let alone three times in a season. So I went into that playoff game thinking Green Bay was going to win, we were going to move on, whatever. And then we get embarrassed by Minnesota, you know, lose by two scores, I think. And then it hit me. I was like, oh, wow, it really is difficult to beat a three, it, it is, three times. Especially when you barely won like Green Bay did. In the playoffs, it's totally different. The re- And what I'm getting to the point here, the reason why I – think it might be different this time is because the Saints have dominated the Bucks twice. And I'm going to tell you right now, the the dome play, in my opinion, plays more into the Bucks' favor than yeah. the Saints. I would agree with that. Because Drew Brees has a noodle form regardless. They're playing inside helps that, obviously, but Tom Brady doesn't have a noodle. And guess who's going to be throwing pissers out there on Sunday mm-hmm. night? Three. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I'm going. I, I do think... I just don't trust Drew Brees right now. As weird as that is to say, I don't by trust the way, him. He, by the way, this is the Antonio Bryant game. Antonio Brown. What the hell am I talking about? Antonio, Antonio Brown. Bryant. I don't even know who I'm if that even right is now, a dude. 100 yards and a touchdown, I would almost put 100 bucks on it. I don't know about that. Yeah, watch. watch. Um, I think this could get interesting. New Orleans defense has the capability to get after the passer with just four guys. And that could be a problem for Tampa Bay because I don't trust their offensive line at all. Defensively, I think the defense is very overrated. Uh, it's not It's not been the same defense since that Green Bay game, and no one has really talked about it. Uh, so I, I'm still going to go Tampa, but I, I wouldn't be shocked at all, obviously, if the Saints won. Bottom line, I just like I said, I don't trust Drew Brees at all. He, he, he struggled to throw the ball. Like, every time he threw the ball against Chicago, it barely got anywhere. Like, I mean, dude, it anything just, past 10 yards, like, it struggled to get there. It just, exactly, dude, dude, like, when you watch natural throwers of football, you just see how easy it looks, like Rodgers and Mahomes, and even, like, Jared Goff, people were like, just have it. Dude, when Drew Brees throws, it looks like he's winding his yes. entire, Cam Newton, like Cam Newton, he has to wind his whole fucking body up and wall out of his hand. I, I, rem- I forget, I remember there was just one play, I think it was a play to Jared Cook, someone obviously for the Saints, but he threw the ball, and it was past, you know, it was going past 10 yards, and the Sa- I think it was to Jared Cook, he caught it, but I, I thought it was incomplete at first. It's on the ground, yeah. Cook yeah, had to, like, make an incredible catch to even get, I'm like, oh my gosh, he can't even get it that far, you know? I, I, but yeah, I just don't trust Drew Brees. And if the Saints do manage to win this game, like I would feel really good about playing them in the NFC Championship. Oh yeah, dude, dude. Uh, Saints coming up to Lambeau is a much better matchup than the Bucks coming up to Lambeau. I agree. Um. All right. So my game: Rams at Packers Saturday afternoon. James, all this reminds me a little bit of last year against Seattle. All the talk this week has been the Rams. How great the Rams defense is. Aaron Donald, Jalen yes, Ramsey against Devontae Adams. And I do like same with last year. All I heard last year was Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, uh, Marshawn Lynch, even though he sucked in the playoffs. Uh, you know, and I just remember thinking, y'all know Green Bay's pretty good too, right? And I remember thinking last year, and I wasn't really wrong. I thought Green Bay would win going away against Seattle. Seattle did not match up with Green Bay. I thought the only way Seattle would win is if Russell Wilson put on a cape and was Superman, which is what happened. Because, one, Green Bay was up 18 points in that game at one point, and then Russell Wilson put on the cape and made it a close game. So I wasn't wrong, really, about that game. With this, I feel the exact same way. I don't see how this game's going to be that close. I just don't. And I know I'm a diehard fan, but – and don't get me wrong. Like, I think the Rams' defense matches up very well with Green Bay's offense, but it's still Aaron Rodgers. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, he's going to show up. He's going to Dude, play this well. Is, this is the, the way people need to just start looking at it because I get it. Like, defensive matchups, Ramsey on, on Adams, who's going to block uh, Aaron Donald. Blah, blah, Green Bay's blah. still going to get theirs. They're still going to get theirs. is is – is Jared Goff scoring? That's the that exactly. No one has talked about that. Absolutely not. It's the same way I feel about 
Yeah, dude, the Browns actually match up really well against the Chiefs, no doubt. There's a lot of things that go well against them. Or I don't think they match up well across the board. They have yeah. a lot of great there are are area, that, Exactly. There are areas of the game where they could match up well dude, and expose it. Dude, Baker's not scoring more points than Mahomes. Exactly. It's just not. It's just not. I'm sorry. It's not. And, unless they do some bullshit they did last week where they get a bunch of turnovers. I just yeah. don't see it. I just don't. Um, I'm going to harp on this game a lot because, all, like I said, all I've heard this week is how great the Rams are. And I, I agree, the Rams are good. But let, let's – Are they? But they? They're good. I mean, they're good. They have – I was listen, I was, I'll, I'll say this. I was listening to Cowherd today, and he was kind of hyping up the Rams. He thought, you know, the Rams could potentially pull off an upset. He'd take Green Bay to win, though. And he said, I think the Rams have a better roster. This could be a very close game. Then he started going over it and said, I'm going to do the top ten players in this game, and I bet you they're on the Rams. And he starts going through it, and he's like, okay, you know, Aaron Donald, Aaron Rodgers. And he starts getting, and then by the time he gets to about seven or eighth on the list, he has about six Green Bay players. <laughs> and he was like, oh, wow. <laughs> like, he didn't admit he was wrong, but he said, like, oh, wow, Green Bay's got a pretty good team. <laughs> Dude, everyone knew that about the Rams. They do have a good roster, but it's top-heavy yes. rosters. They have an elite corner, like, maybe the best corner. They have an elite defensive lineman, maybe the best. They have a fantastic receiving core, but, like, dude, their left, their their tackle is old as shit. Yeah. I'm pretty sure their interior line is maybe banged up. Um, Cam Akers is 22 years old. Like, I, I, yeah, he's a good Th- player, And that's but... the other thing. Everyone's talking about Cam Akers, Cam Akers, Cam Akers. I just saw Derrick Henry, like I said the other day, go into Lambeau. We're in yeah. conditions that should have favored him, and Green Bay held him to under 100 yards, only about four yards per attempt, you know, barely over four yards per attempt, didn't even score a touchdown. I don't see Cam Akers doing any better than that. He might, but no, it's Cam not going to be much is a better. Really good player, but at the end of the day, I think Cam Akers is a product of having extremely, extremely fresh legs in a Sean McVay offense where they can pound the shit out of the rock. I mean, uh, McVay and Shanahan showed that they're they're probably better run schemers than pass schemers, which is yeah. crazy to think about. Cause it's I like, agree. No, I agree with that. Running, They've like, always ran the ball pretty well. Yeah. Um, I, I want to harp on this too with the Rams. I think we are really overvaluing their performance last week, especially defensively. I thought it was a terrible performance. Not not by them defensively, but. We're not. I don't think we're giving or we're really talking about how bad Seattle's offense was the last few weeks of the regular season. Or the Rams' offense. The yes, Rams offense that was too. Fucking horrible, man. There were p- three plays that decided that game last week. Yes. One was a pick six in favor of the Rams. I'll be honest. I. It could happen, obviously, but I'm pretty sure Aaron Rodgers has thrown one pick six at Lambeau his entire career, and it was three years ago. If it if it happened again, it had to have been years before that. So. I wouldn't bank on that happening this week. Then there were two separate 44-yard plays. One was a terrific catch by Cooper Cup. I'll give him credit. The other was a screen pass to Cam Akers, which should have been about a 10 or 12-yard gain that turned into 44 after some missed tackles. Take those three plays away. The Rams offense scored 13 points, had 245 total yards on 69 plays, and averaged 3.5 yards per play. It was not a very good offensive performance. And Cam Akers had about 130, you know, of those yards. Yeah. Um, Dude, so, Jared, Goff, Jared Goff against a fucking terrible defense threw for what, 200 yards, 180 yards? So, that? so that's the other thing. Goff last week, again, if you take, and I don't want to say if you take it away because you can't really take it away, but I'm going to because yeah. those three plays literally decided the game. Yeah. Uh, so last week, take away those two 44-yard, and they were 44-yard passes, which one really wasn't. One, Like I said, it was a screen pass that ended up going 44 yards. The other was a great play by Cooper Cup. But take those away. He was 7 of 17 for 67 yards, one touchdown, 3.9, 3.9 yards per attempt. He was not good. Not good at all. He was not good. Not- um, so, again, the Rams offense was not good last week. No, no. And it hasn't been. No. It hasn't been. Why do you think Jared Goff had his ass cheek on the bench at the beginning of that game? Yep. Their number one overall pick, who they're paying $35 million to sit on his collecting square. And, and Sean McVay has already said that uh, Goff is starting this week. I believe I got that alert today. Yeah. So, also, yeah. another thing I want to touch upon. Goff's numbers in freezing temperatures. Two Cal- games in Cal- 2018. Yeah. At Denver and at Chicago. I think he was 1-1 one one in both games, but he played terribly in both. 
Yep. Uh, combined the two games, he had a completion percentage of 47.2 for 381 yards, 5.9 yards per pass attempt. I'm sorry. Uh, zero touchdowns, five interceptions, a passer rating of 38.8. That ain't going to do it. Factor that in to the fact that he's got one thumb, pretty much. The broken thumb is on his throwing hand. In the freezing cold, which is what it's likely going to be. It's not as cold as what it was originally predicted to be uh, in, Lam uh, in Green Bay this week. It says right here... High of 36, low of 25, so it's not going to be as cold as they thought. But now it's shifted. I, I saw this morning. I literally saw this morning. I said, no chance of snow. Now it's saying there's a chance of snow. 40%. Dude, the more you, you talk about this, this is probably going to be a blowout, dude, because I can see. And that's what I'm getting at. I can see maybe maybe not like the Packers score 40 points. But no, I no, 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 no. Packers putting up like 27 and the Rams only scoring like 13. Yeah, so that's what I'm getting to here. And I know I've monologued here, but no, that's okay. I, I just don't see how where the matchup, like where are the Rams going to expose the matchup? I know Green Bay has struggled at stopping the run, but you got Jared Goff with one hand. Yeah, they're going to load gonna up the box and dare Jared Goff to beat them through the air. I promise you. I promise yeah. you. And and I mean Jair, in principle, is probably going to take Robert Woods out. So it's like is Cooper Cup and and. And, an uh, injured Cooper Cup, by the way. An injured Cooper Cup and an injured Jared Goff going to beat Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau. I'm, I'm going to go no. There. I just don't see it. I don't think it's get like like you just said. I don't see it being a forty to ten type of blowout. Wouldn't really surprise me if it ended Not up being it. But I'll give the Rams defense some credit. I think it's going to be like a twenty three to ten type of game. Like it's really not that. It's really not going to be that close. Yeah, the Rams might even lead after a quarter. I don't know. No. Maybe at halftime, if there's ever a moment for Sean McVay to lose his halftime stat of 37-0, whatever it is, it's probably this week. But I just don't see it happening. It might be close at halftime. I think Green Bay blo like opens it up in the second half. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't even see it being close after the first quarter. I think you guys will be up at least a touchdown after the first quarter. I'm, so. I'm not that worried about it, honestly. I, yeah, I wouldn't. Have. I saw what did I see today? Uh, maybe it was the Jared Goff news. I thought, but. I thought it might have been something else, but I remember thinking, like, I feel so much. I think it was Jared Goff. I saw that news, and I thought, dude, I feel so best, much better about this. Wolford this worried me a little bit. Possibly have in all the playoffs. This is the this is the easiest, best matchup for a tune-up game that you need. This is great because you don't have to come off a bye and play some team that might put up 17 points in the first quarter. It'll be hard to overcome. You can kind of use this game to warm up, beat a, a a less good team like the Rams, and now next week you'll be ramped up, probably playing the Bucks. And then I do. They've also hyped up Aaron Donald, who, by the way, is injured. I want to just warn people that Eldon Jenkins, our Pro Bowl left guard, is going to be on him. Then the center Corey Lindsley, who graded out to be the number one center, and according to Pro Football Focus in the league, is going to double him. Doesn't matter. He's going to make plays, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I, for the most part, I think he's going to be limited. Dude, to think about uh, one single defensive lineman is you can scheme you can scheme around him. Well, Aaron and they Donald have a pretty good defensive line. I, it, it has surprised me this year how good it's been. But if you're relying on Leonard Floyd, who has been good, I just – we've held Khalil Mack twice this year to one sack. Yeah. yeah. Leonard Floyd and Khalil Mack. I just I, – I don't see where the Rams can have a matchup issue. Unless Aaron Donald just plays like God – and no. Jalen Ramsey takes away Devontae Adams, then I could, then I'd be worried. No, I mean, and I, I could see both of those things happening. I still don't see losing the game. No, I don't either. I mean, it would be probably an ugly game, but I agree. This is a very fun, good tune-up game for us, because uh, I do worry coming off a bye after you're rolling. But no, seriously, I that's do. A, that's a, that's a thing. Yeah. And I do think, but this is a good matchup we, where we probably won't play perfect. I'm not expecting to. I do expect we will struggle a little bit, but. We'll st we should still probably win. Go to the NFC Championship, you know, with a game under our belt. Be more focused and play New Orleans and or Tampa, and I feel pretty good about that. Hey, you barely won. Get your asses ready because these two teams could beat you. <laughs> yep. Sort of situation. I'm excited. I'm excited for Championship Weekend to say the least, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I, we got to get there first. I'm not. I, we got to get past the Rams, then I can worry about. Because I did see the weather for next weekend in Green Bay. It's a lot more favorable. <laughs> 
Uh, well, for us, I meant, not for the other team. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, the weather is on Saturday, and I know, granted, you don't play Saturday on Championship Week, but it's a high of 19, low of 16. So That's going to be cold. <laughs> it's much more favorable. Not to mention wood, wind chill, which this doesn't factor in. So, got to gotta win Saturday. Got to win Saturday, then I can focus on next week. <laughs> got it, brother. All right, so for the most part, I think we were in agreement there. No, only uh, one was Bills Ravens, I think. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that was it. Yep, that was it. <sighs> that's gonna be a that's gonna be a close game. It's gonna be a good fucking game. That's gonna be a life. close one. I I, yeah. I really I really wanted to get Ravens, but I got to believe in our boy Josh Allen. That's big boy. And football. and Sean McDermott strikes me as a coach where, hey, we got lucky last week. You know, we did not play well. Let's refocus this week. I think they'll yeah, be better. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. All right, my man. I'll let you go. All right, brother. Talk to you later, man. All right, later.